Today we're going to be looking at one of the most exciting kickboxing fights of all time. This was nominated for Fight of the Year in 2015. We are talking about Joseph Valtellini versus Nikki Holtzkin. When we watch fights, or at least when I watch fights, I usually feel like I can take so much information. There's such a learning experience, a learning curve for me as I'm watching the bout. Now, in particular, wanted to focus on this fight for today because it's just super, super exciting. But also because Joseph and I ended up sharing a very sort of similar climb through the glory ranks. Joseph in this fight ended up going up against Nikki Holtzkin, who is the number one fighter in the world. On my first big glory tournament experience, this was a tournament, this was the second fight of the night. So in my first experience, I in my second fight went up against Yuta Kubo. Joseph Altolini and I both ended up losing these fights against the number one fighter in the world. But when we look at the records of the guys we were facing, it wasn't even really a fair fight. We look at Nikki Holtzkin with like 70, 80 plus fights and only 11 losses. And then we look at Joseph Valtellini, whose record is pretty much the same as just Nikki Holtzkin's losses. And the same thing when I fought Yuta Kubo, who was the two time K1 Max champion, I was going up against him just going, oh my gosh, this is just mind blowing that I'm even competing against this guy. And then from there, after the losses, Joseph Valtellini and I were both able to bounce back and ultimately win the glory title, which I think really helped pave the way for other North Americans who are now able to go and say, you know, I'm from Canada, I'm from the US, I'm a very good kickboxer. And the elite promotions will now go, okay, yeah, you're from the same country as Joseph Valtellini and Gabriel Braga. Yeah, let's take a look at you. Whereas in the past, when I went to Europe and I competed for the first time, they basically laughed at me and said, you can't beat the Europeans. So that's why I want to focus on this fight in particular. Even though Joseph didn't get the win, he still did a spectacular job. So let's roll the first part of the fight. All right, they're walking in for the stare down. Now, don't be fooled by the fact that experience absolutely does matter. There's some points where you have to sort of push it aside and go, you know what? I feel like I'm good enough to beat this person. Like when I fought Lord Zilla, I had so much less experience than him. Something like 20 fights for myself and 180 for him. But at some point you just got to go, okay, you know what? I'm not going to let that bother me. But in this fight, as the fighters come out, we're going to notice right away that yes, experience does matter. And, you know, if Joseph had had another, you know, 20, 30, 40 fights, maybe he would have got this win. Very likely he would have got this win because he's going up against somebody who just has so much more experience than him. So they start off nice exchanging of low kicks, back and forth, back and forth. This is what Bazooka Joe is known for. And one of the elements that I really like when Joe lets his leg go is he's still being ultra defensive because it is not unheard of for somebody to throw a low kick swing the arm down the same way that they do when they go to body level and then have the cross come in because we're at a much closer range when we throw a low kick as opposed to a high kick or a body round kick. So when we see Joseph throw his low kicks, he keeps his hands very tight. He's not swinging down initially because he's being cautious. He's landing the shot and keeping that normal swinging arm just a little bit higher to protect himself. Now right here, I really like this point where Nikki Holtzkin throws his jab and then right off that, Bazooka Joe counters back with the inside low. The reason this can be very successful is when people throw jab with intent. That means they're really trying to damage you. Very often they're gonna shift their weight forward. If I keep my body weight back here and I jab, it's not gonna be a power jab. So when we lean forward, that's gonna be trying to inflict some damage. But as we do that, our weight shifts to the lead leg. So if you see somebody doing that and you can simply just turtle shell and let their jab come off the guard and then bang, inside low, there's a very good chance that you're gonna land it and it's gonna be very damaging because the inside low of the leg or the inside thigh is not conditioned the same way as the outside. And with that heavy extra weight there, a few of those and you might get the guy thinking twice before jabbing and committing weight. You see very different guard between these two fighters. Bazooka Joe keeps his hands very tight, very high. Nikki Holtzkin drops him down a little bit more. He's a little bit looser with him. He's not protecting his head to the same extent at that full range. Once he gets closer, then he absolutely will. Tricky little move there from Nikki Holtzkin. He goes for the touch, 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 the grab and pull. It doesn't land, but if you can figure out how to pull that off, 
it's definitely something worth having in your arsenal. All right, Nikki's starting to put some pressure on, start to corner, big uppercut from him, but Bazooka Joe fires back. And as I mentioned in one of the previous videos that I just did about my glory title fight against Mosab Amrani, you can look that up right there. I was talking about one of the big differences between amateur and high level pros is the ability to take a shot, have your head rattled, but not get hit again. You're able to recover. And that's what we saw Bazooka Joe do there. He took the shot, but instead of shelling up and then getting hit with a third and a fourth, he takes a shot, he recovers, he fires back. And ultimately he stops Nikki Holtzkin's attack, anything further from coming and damaging him. Very high level stuff from Bazooka Joe right there. We're moving around, nice flying knee there from Nikki Holtzkin and boom. Nikki Holtzkin clips Bazooka Joe with the counter left hook. I've talked recently on the channel a lot about maintaining a defensive mindset even when you're being offensive. Now we just talked before about Bazooka Joe getting hit and then being able to counter back and stop the attack. But in this instance, we see what happens when you try and do that and you don't stay defensive. He takes the knee in the head and then Bazooka Joe tries to fire back but he's not being aware enough about his hand defense as he throws and he gets clipped for it and is really hurt. And from here we see Nikki looking for the attack now, walking him down. Good hands by Nikki Holtzkin. He stays very loose, very fluid when he throws. His hands aren't super tight, very different than most Dutch style kickboxers. Good finish to the round by Nikki. Just pushing in. You can tell Bazooka Joe's hurt. And this is just one of those instances where the experience matters. And that's ultimately what I believe was the difference in this fight. That experience from Nikki Holtzkin where he's able to just maintain composure, wait for Bazooka Joe to make the mistake, and then land big. Going into round two, you had to score round one for Nikki Holtzkin with that big damaging left hook. Let's see how Bazooka Joe does in the second round. Tight guard there, but eight a knee. I always wonder when we see Bazooka Joe throwing those low kicks, how many can most people take? Because he hits extra hard, but even more importantly, his timing is spectacular. I wonder how many people can take from him. Is it five? Is it 20? Nikki's doing a good job right now. The wear and tear is starting to just bang in a little bit there. I can tell his thigh is just starting to weaken up a little bit. But these guys are so tough. You have to be so tough at the highest level. If I was in Bazooka Joe's corner, I'd be telling him you gotta keep that low kick going, but you gotta watch out for that jab. That jab is sneaking through. When he throws his low kick, his hands aren't quite as tight as he can, and Nikki's just firing it out, catching him. We wanna make sure that you're landing the low kick probably best at the end of Nikki's attack. Nikki throws, chop his leg, cause he's heavy. I think we saw a little bit of a buckle at this point from Nikki Holtzkin as he takes the low kick. That's a good sign for Bazooka Joe. If he can keep his head protected and keep throwing those low kicks, either at the beginning or the end of Nikki's combos, you're gonna have more likelihood of starting to slow him down. We even see Nikki switching stances now, that one looked like it hurt. When people start getting hit and then reaching for a low kick, that's a sign that things are starting to wear down. That's something that you want to avoid doing. There's a difference between me seeing the kick coming, bending into it, and trapping as opposed to getting hit, buckling, and then trying to grab. The latter is very dangerous, and it's a sign that the person is injured. Nice work from Bazooka Joe, not just attacking the front leg now, but also attacking the back leg. Smart, because when somebody starts getting light and they start checking the lead leg, that means that back leg is extra heavy. Great round two. What I would like to see, or what I would be cautioning Joseph Beltellini on, is the ease in which Nikki Holtzkin is able to land his jab. Sometimes it's coming right after the low kick from Bazooka Joe, other times he's just able to feed it in. That means that Bazooka's hands are just a little too eased off, a little bit too wide, maybe just tighten up a tad more because the glove is very small. The glove only needs to be about this big to fit through, so if your guard is any wider and you make no adjustments during the punch, you're gonna get clipped. Tighten up just a little bit more so that shot is not coming in and landing so easy. But great round by both fighters. I wasn't really scoring that. It was very close. If I had to gun to my head, I'd say that was probably still a Nikki Holtzkin round, but it could have gone the other way as well. Let's move in to round three. Good action right away. Bazooka Joe gets stunned by a left hook, being a little sloppy with his right hand coming back to his head. Gets rattled. Nikki goes on the attack. Big uppercut lands, body gets hurt there. 
Look how Nicky throws his hands. They don't come back to his head. That's very, very odd, very, quite exceptional. Left hand just bouncing in and in and in, just flaring back and forward, changing up the angles. But the hand doesn't touch the ground and there's no eight counts anymore. So, you know, there's no, there's no count there. What a heart Joseph Valtellini has. He's taken some big shots. He's just right in there. And again, with some extra experience, I think this fight could have gone very different. He's still landing shots. Look at that, nice jab. You can just see his bazooka combos there. His right hand is drawing down just a little bit. And that's where he's getting clipped with that left hook. That's been the danger in this fight for him in terms of almost getting knocked down. But he's still hurting Nicky Holtzkin's leg. I can see the fatigue. The pain is starting to add up there. If he can keep going, you never know if a knockdown can just come. And that can change the fight like that. We see Nicky Holtzkin executing super solid tight Dutch guard. Bazooka Joe letting the hands go and just nothing landing. And if you can get down this guard in kickboxing, in Muay Thai, you're going to be so much stronger a fighter. Doesn't mean you need to implement it all the time, but it means when necessary, you can just guard up, execute minimal energy to keep yourself safe. Mixed tempo of Nikki Holtzkin is a problem for many fighters, especially ones who stand within punch range. Nikki's able to just touch, 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 fire, touch, 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 fire. Very difficult to pinpoint when he's going to attack and his energy output is much more controlled. That means he won't tire out as quickly. Getting down to the end of the fight here, Joe's still taking a decent amount of shots, but right in there. And now in the end, this is spectacular from him. He knows he has to get a KO. He comes out, just guns blazing, but a little too wild with his chin extending out from his face. It's just when you make sure that you go for those big attacks, that you're still thinking defensively. When you don't, things like that end up happening. Super unfortunate because he was just looking so spectacular through the whole fight. Yes, not winning, but still representing Canada and all of North American kickboxers so well. Overall, again, I'm gonna go back to the experience factor for Nikki Holtzkin being the massive advantage. No doubt Nikki is a sensational kickboxer. We all know that. But I would have been very interested to see a five round rematch down the road. Bazooka Joe would have had to change up his strategy, would have had to have an answer for Nikki Holtzkin's overall style. We basically got to see the best of Nikki here. If you can come up with a way to fight a little differently, switch things up, don't let him fight the way he wants to fight like he got to in this one, then things become much more difficult for him. It's a shame we never got to see that fight, but we got a spectacular showing from them in their one and only bout. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you haven't already, join the channel and get subscribed. Train hard, guys. See you back here soon for another video.